Hello and welcome to Aundel School for what is remarkably Aundel's first home game of the season. They are taking on St Edward's Oxford, two schools very familiar to those of us. On the Next Gen 15 live broadcast, we're very excited about this one. The temperatures have dropped this weekend, but the sun is out there shining and we can't wait to get going. Two very, very good sets of players lining up for us today. Aundel led by England international Billy Pascoe in the centres with Dexter Lynch, who's moved from fly half to outside centre for today's game, alongside him in the centres. In the half-backs, Theo Haskins is promoted from the bench to start a scrum half with Rory Potter moving from nine to play at ten. In the back three, Tom Gamble is at fullback. He's spent plenty of time at outside centre. And on the wings, Benjamin Djordovic and George Eyre, who moves from 13 to the wing. So uh, just the one change in the back line from the side that took on Halebury live last week, but it has promoted a bit of a reshuffle in that back line in the absence of Angus Inch. In the front row, David Danjuma, Fergus Lyle and AJ Singh. And once again in the front row, Freddie De La Rue and William Chapman once again in the second row. And it's an unchanged back row as well. Elijah Thomas-Williams, Jack Buick and Arthur Case on the bench. Charles Jr. Chew and Benjamin Dollar, who started a few games in the second row this season. And Charles Cartilage, Jamie Leonard, is the director of rugby. For St. Edwards Oxford, well, they are led by their fly half and Midland Central star, Charlie Mason, who will be wearing 12 today. Uh, potential England under-18 squad member. Alongside him at halfback, Buster Relton, who's an exciting talent. And then in the centres, Sander Tarrant at inside centre and Kit Holland at outside centre. They'll be wearing 13 and 16 rather than 12 and 13, but we'll uh, we'll keep you abreast of that one. And in the back three, Jack Wood, Aidan Walker and Matt Goldsmith. In the forward pack, Elliot Sarushi moves from the back row to the front row. Ollie Gurney and Elliot Northam are alongside him. In the second row is Toby Bird and Michael Hurst. With Hal Holland, Will Mowat and Will Allen all in the back row, Will Allen returns in the absence of the Midlands central, central man, Matt Sell. On the bench, Caden Hader and Charlie Ferret. Joe Wimperney is their director of rugby. And we are very lucky today, actually, to be joined by one of the unfortunate uh, injured players for Andal School in Bertie Gibson. Uh, who we're hoping to be able to connect with in just a second or two. Bertie, are you there to hear me? Bertie, tell me a little bit about uh, today's game. The boys must be pumped for the first home game of the season. Yeah, first home game of the season, big big game for a lot of the Arsenal players. First time playing on the, the first team pitch in Aldo. Um, after a couple back to back losses against Rugby and Halebury, I think the boys will be definitely pumped up to redeem themselves. And uh, not too many changes. It's been a fairly consistent lineup. You must be gutted not to be able to be out there with them, though. Yeah, the, um, yeah not too many injuries, thankfully, this season. Unfortunately, I'm out, but. Um, I think the boys are definitely ready. I think key players to watch out for today is um, in the more than the scrum. We've got we've got a big we've got a big pack, so I think that will be a focal point of today's attack as well as our centres and wingers. It certainly is going to be. It's uh, some exciting, talented players out there for Aundel today and indeed for St Edward's Oxford. Bertie, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be speaking to Bertie at half time and full time as well. So be very handy to get his insights uh, from inside the Aundel school in a sanctum. Aundel are out on the pitch. They're just hitting a couple of tackle bags before we get going. A couple of Scottish qualified players in the Aundel ranks as well. David Danjuma and Dexter Lynch. St. Edward's Oxford. Who of course, we saw at Ifley Road in that magnificent game against Magdalen College a few weeks ago. Make their way onto the pitch in, pitch in their sky blue shirts. You can just make out there in the 12 shirt, Charlie Mason, the fly half and captain. He's going to be one to really look out for today. So many players on both sides.
and we'll be having a moment's silence, I believe, for uh, the victims of recent events in the Middle East. Impeccably observed moment silence there it was in fact for one of the St. Edward's Oxford members of staff that passed away recently. Our thoughts are with their friends and families. We're just about ready to get underway here. St. Edward's Oxford look as though they'll be kicking off playing from left to right in their sky blue shirts. Aundel will receive in their traditional white Incredible to believe that this is Aundel's first home game of the season. This is their seventh outing. They've been on the road the whole way through with some success as well. Won four of their six games. They hadn't won a game on the road in five years. Thankfully, this year, they've got that monkey off the back as they gather in the kickoff. A big first up carry. Looking to move the ball wide now, our Roundel. This is the rugby we've been used to seeing from them, but that ball just going forward. Djurjevic, look, at, look to open the taps there. And the ball had just gone forward, so we'll come back for the scrum. Would you believe it? I believe I've been refereed by today's match official. He's obviously been on the circuit for a while. First scrum of the game then. Teddy's put in. Bit of a blind side here for Will Allen to potentially have a look at. Buster Relton there will be the man to put the ball in. Sports scholar at Teddy's is Buster Relton. Taking a bit of time to get this scrum underway. Relton, the old fashioned tap on the hooker's back. Has to go digging for this one a little bit at the tail of the scrum, but he releases Mason in the back line. First chance for an attack here for Teddy's Oxford. Trying to get their offloading game going, but it's been stolen. Loose ball for Aundel. We look to the blind side. Do they have a couple of numbers there? Not quite. Good hard carrying though. Into the midfield. Out onto the far side, but once again, as Aundel looked to go wide, the ball just drifting forward. So again, we have a scrum. Two teddies in Aundel territory. Aundel showing signs of what they can do, but not quite managing to get that final pass in. We know they've got plenty of pace in those wide channels. Healthy crowd here today. That's Buster Relton. Taps Gurney on the back. 
feeds Mason. Introduces Goldsmith from 15. Turned over by Aldor. Now they look to move it wide again. Can they get that final pass right this time? Bouncing off tacklers. That's Thomas Williams. And for the first time, they're into Teddy's territory. Teddy's defence is up fast. They go for the big looping pass over the top. Didn't quite work as intended. High tackle comes in. They're playing with advantage now. Though. Let's drop back into the pocket for Potter. He thinks he spotted a bit of space. It's into the arms of Teddy's in the backfield and we'll come back for the penalty. The first real set of phase play from the home side there. It was a decent effort from Potter, but didn't quite make it. It was really well kept in by Teddy's. They send it back with interest, so Aldo will have to try and construct something else. They send the ball deep into the Teddy's 22. And Teddy's going to look to play out from inside that 22 as Mason tries to use fast hands to get the ball away. There is a bit of space, but it's drifted forwards. And they've handed Aundel an opportunity here from the scrum in the 22. Well, the kick to the corner didn't work out for the home side, but they may yet have an opportunity. And we'll have possession. Chapman charges forward. Penalty Teddy, so coming in from the side from Aundel that time. Teddy's escape. The Aundel faithful packed into that stand on the far side. They'll get raucous later on. Always been one of the great schoolboy pavilions. Gurney to throw in for Teddy's. And go to mow it off the top, but loose ball, and it's tidied by Aundel. In fact, lost forward by Aundel as they tried to tidy it up. We'll come back for that knock on. Scrappy start to the game. A lot of spill ball. Worth pointing out, this game is potentially a precursor to a meeting after half term in the Continental Tyre Schools Vars. They're both in the Midlands A section. Teddies have already qualified for the regional semi-final there after a stunning 63-10 victory over Aylesbury Grammar School in midweek. And on Thursday, Aundel will be taking on Kings Grantham should they win that game, they will be hosting Teddies again in that regional semi-final after half term. So this could be the first part in an epic two-part series here in Northamptonshire. As Teddies just have a little rumble there. Might look to try and clear their lines now. 
They do indeed, as Mason. It's the old, old-fashioned casual torpedo kick. Bit of a lob wedge there. As the pass just sits up into the arms of Andal there. Trying to get the offload away. Living a little dangerously, but tidying it up. Once again, the ball is loose, but again, tidied up by Andal. Djurjevic oh, concedes the penalty. Really sharp work on the floor there from Will Mowat. He is a canny operator on the open side flank. He's been a key player for Teddy's this season. And you can see why with that intervention there. Thirteen of the fifteen that started in that epic encounter at Ifley Road a few weeks ago were in the starting lineup once again for Teddy's. Hal Holland coming in on the blind side with Elliot Sarushi moving up from there to loose head. And in the back line, Matt Goldsmith returning at fullback with Aidan Walker sliding from fullback to the right wing. Otherwise, it's as you were from that absolute epic. And if you joined us for that one, you know what this side are capable of. Around the front they go. Driving short. Mason looks cross field. Could there be an opening over on that far side where the kick's just come off the toe a little bit and it's going to run out into touch? But it was a nice idea from Charlie Mason. And we'll have a little think about going quickly there. Didn't quite come off. So both sides have had early opportunities. Neither quite able to take them yet, but plenty of time yet. In fact, another hour to go. Just in the early stages here. Aundel. Through the forwards. A little half break from the base of the ruck. Now they just stab it over. That could work nicely. It does work nicely. Into the hands of Pasco, and Pasco gets the offload away. They earned the penalty, but that was sharp work between Potter and Pasco. Sensing that there was no sweep in behind that Teddy's defence. So just stabbing the ball in behind and they earn the penalty off the back of it. And this time the kick does find touch and a good touch it is. Ball comes down. Still it moves. Playing advantage. Illegally pulled down by Teddy's. Ball is loose again though. So Pasco has to tidy up and Pasco creates a bit of space and that could be the opening score. Oh, that's wonderful finishing from Benjamin Djordovic. Pasco reacted. To the loose ball. And his left winger, the number 11, Benjamin Djordjevic, finishes off in the corner. Pasco. Showing all the skills and all the patience 
that have him held in such high regard. And Djurjevic with a wonderful finish on the left-hand side. Conversion just doesn't quite go, but Aundel have the 5-0 lead. 13 minutes into the game. Five nil they lead. Benjamin Djurovic, the try scorer. Billy Pasco, the creator. After that tidy work between Potter and Pasco had earned the team the penalty after the chip through. And so Aundel get on the attack again. They'll be happy with this start. Next Gen 15 live streams haven't been kind to Aundel this season. They've been live in their two previous games and been on the wrong side of results. But they're in the lead here, 5-0. Just under a quarter of an hour gone. They thump it straight down the middle of the field. Ball bounces, but tidied up. The handle chase is really good, though, putting it. Teddy's under all sorts of pressure. There's a bit of chaos on the field. But it's a penalty, Teddy's. That was a really, really good kick chase from the home side. Teddies get their penalty up beyond the halfway line. Referee wants that gap widened. Players vaguely acknowledge that. But again, it's difficult line out ball, but Teddies have managed to claim it. Mason just has a little look in behind. And there was a bit of space there, but it's been tidied up really nicely in the backfield by Gamel. Had to work hard to cover that space. And now Aundel looking to counter-attack. That's a wonderful burst through. Could be some space here for Djurovic again. Got one try already. Bounces back in field. Still going as Djurovic. Needs a bit of support now. Pumps the legs. Finds the support. Brilliant counter-attacking play from Aundel. As Thomas Williams carries it in. Ball just spills loose, but it's been tidied by Dan Juma, who looks as though he's wearing 17 rather than one today. Fast hands from Aundel out to that far tram line and then bundled out into touch by Teddy's. But nice attacking play that from the home side.
Line out tidier that time from Teddy's and Mason thumps it long. He really does have a huge boot on him, Charlie Mason. So much experience with Midland Central as well. Was starting for them last year in his lower sixth. Measure of the potential they see in him. As Aundel once again start to show some attacking promise here. They just got ahead of the kick there though, but they are finding that when they move the ball wide, they're seeing some spaces. Promising signs. From the boys in white. Mason with the penalties, just going to look to stick this one into the corner. Doesn't quite go though. Just caught the breeze. There is a stiff breeze out here at Aundel School today. And drifted in field, runs dead and will come all the way back for the scrum, I think. Indeed we are. And from a potentially perilous situation, Aundel now have a scrum on the halfway line. And a lot of space in which to attack. So scrum on the near side, Andal playing from left to right. Don't be surprised if you see them try and run something that ends with the boot here. Potential attacking kick out there to the far side to George Eyre could be an option. Difficult ball though, so Aldo have to reset their plans. Really tricky ball that one for Goldsmith to try and reel in. Referee decides there was no advantage though, so we're going to come all the way back to the halfway line for the penalty from that scrum. It has been a bit of a stop start. First half of the game here. But once again, you suspect Potter's going to have a little look towards the corner. Yielded a penalty, yielded a line out in the 22 last time, and uh, somehow he's managed to convince the referee to move the mark of this penalty in field quite some distance. I'm not quite sure how he's managed to do that. Sam Warburton-esque conversation skills with the referee there as he gets his side up just a few yards short of the 22. Shades of Warburton in 2017 with the Lions. Somehow talking the referee out of the penalty. This time it's Rory Potter just convincing the referee to make his angle easier. And to bring the ball down well at the line out. And then the counter drive comes in from Teddy's, who ripped the ball clear. Turned over possession. And Allen carries into the heart of the Andal defence. Mason now just checks back against the grain. The Andal back row was up on him. An absolute flash off a case coming off the line in that sky blue scrum cap. But Teddy's have the penalty. High tackle as the ball bounced loose. Unlucky one, that one. Just so excited was De Root to be able to make the tackle there that uh, he got his timing a bit wrong. So Mason just pumps that one deep. This one does find touch, and a fantastic touch it is as well, all the way up to the 10-metre line. Top work from Mason.
Teddy's clean ball off the top of the line out and they look to go wide nice and early. Met fantastically in the midfield though. Forces them into the kick. Such was the pressure that the Andal defence had come through with. Claimed in the backfield. And we're going to come back for the penalty. Contact in the air at the line out. Mason, from a similar position, the ball went dead, but this time it's gone dead again. He really is trying to get it right into that corner today in an effort to get his side back on level pegging, but again goes dead, so we'll have a scrum again. Theo Haskins will be the man to put the ball in. He started a few games, Haskins. We go again. Haskins moves it wide Pasco drives hard at the line and Pasco oh, then met with real force superb tackle from Lysander Tarrant penalty teddies Just having a chat with Pasco there. Just tells him about his side's discipline. So Mason is going to go to the corner again. I wonder if he might just take a couple of yards off this one just to make it safe. indeed just take a couple off and they're into the 22 promising position this for Teddy's Oxford first big attacking chance 26 and a half minutes into the game looking for their first points and a response to the Djordovic try line out is solid off the top ball Tarrant out the back to Mason Mason takes it to the line Penalty Aldal holding on on the floor. is spilled and we'll, we'll have the scrum on halfway and, and that chance just didn't click for Teddy's they've been near perfect this season Teddy's five wins from six sweeping victories against next phase academy Pangborn College 
Aylesbury Grammar School, Cokethorpe, and that thrilling victory at Iffley Road against Magdalen College. They're only lost an unbelievably tight one against the Oratory. They're behind here looking for a way to find the way back in, but it's the home side Aundel that have the ball and have a bit of an attacking chance here as Pasco gets on the outside and Pasco feeds the try scorer Djordovic, who does really well to hang on to that one. I'm not sure how he's managed to cling on to it. Turned over though by Teddy's. Mowat. Still going Mowat. Relton thinking about the box kick instead he feeds Mason and Mason sends it long there is a load of grass there on that far right hand side Gamel tidies up and feeds it well, that's a clever idea from Pasco just to stab it through Billy Pasco came off the bench against South Africa for England under 18 in the summer as he wins a penalty for his side there wasn't in the original squad, but flew out after a couple of injuries for that final game against South Africa and got his England under-18 test cap for his troubles. Richly deserved. Fantastic player. The yeah, Northampton Saints inside centre. Plenty have come out to support the Arundel School first 15 today. As I've mentioned already, it's their first home game of the season. They've been waiting a long time for this one. As Thomas Williams brings it off the top. Good pressure on Haskins from Teddy's, but Arundel have just about managed to hang on to possession. And Haskins just feeds it. Now Thomas Williams. Gets his offload away. And now bursting through. Oh, great tap tackle on Case. Case was almost away there. Crucial intervention from Teddy's. Thomas Williams now moves it wide. Out here to Gamel. Gamel throws the dummy and carries on. Eventually hauled down Haskins. And then Potter tries the chip through, but it's claimed by Teddy's, and Teddy's survive. That threatening, threatening Aundel attack. Arthur Case was so nearly through at the start of that move. Crucial, crucial tap tackle on him. As Aundel have a little look for a 50-22 here. It's going to bounce and roll into touch just shy of the 22. So it will be Teddy's ball, but that was very, very close to the fabled 50-22. So Teddy's are going to have to play out of their own half here. Creeping towards half time. Now they'd love to get back on level turns before then, but they've got 80 odd yards to move before they do so.
Apologies there, ladies and gentlemen. Technical fault. It appears we have another one as well. We're back again. Apologies for that. We had a slight technical fault there. But, uh, hopefully, all is recovered. And we're back in play with this penalty for Rory Potter. I do apologise, though, ladies and gentlemen, for that. <whistles> Wonders of the modern world. They sometimes let us all down. Potter sticks it into the corner. But it doesn't quite find touch. We've seen that a couple of times. Teddy's just touch it down behind their own line. And we'll have a goal line dropout, I think, is the referee's call. It was always behind the try line, I think, is what's happened there. Just chance for one more attack for Oundle. That's Delarue. Sorry, Chapman that was. Carries it in. Oh, lovely hands there from Lynch. But it's just gone forward, the referee says. And so with that forward pass, it's half time. Aundel take a 5-0 lead into this half-time break. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I think it was a wonderful bit of play. Um, game spin end 10 with a lot of kicks. But I think the finish by Ben in the corner was excellent. <laughs> and um, in terms of the, the pattern of play, I mean, it's been very tight, hasn't it? Do you think Aldler have found some success when they've moved it wide? Do you think they'll look to uh, to put some of those dangerous backs into position as the uh, second half wears on? Yeah, I think um, definitely we've got most of our joy on the, the wings currently so far, but I also think that we've been, there's a lot of penalties given, so I think we could use that as a weapon for a kick to corner and a more game. And on the skipper Billy Pasco, obviously it was it was him that put away Djurdovic for that for that wonderful finish for the five 0 lead. Um, he's had a real influence, winning that penalty towards the end of the second half. He just he looks as though uh, 
he's a guy that all, all the boys in the team just really look towards when they need a big moment. Yeah, I think Billy's been one of our big leaders this season. So just for him to go go out there and play at his best will definitely will definitely get the boys going and hopefully elevate their game and hopefully get the win for the boys in the second half. And just to reflect on on Teddy's in that first half, I mean they had a few penalty opportunities where they tried to sit the ball in the corner, it just ran dead a couple of times, but yeah, they they'll probably be thinking if we can just make some of those some of those moments stick, we've got a chance to get back into this. Yeah, I think I think we just have to be careful on the penalties we we give away, especially as their kick has been nudging them in the corners. But I think we've done well to disrupt their play, especially after set pieces. But I think we've got to keep up that intensity defensively. And hopefully we can keep them quiet in the second half. Absolutely. Well, thanks very much, Bertie. We'll be catching up with Bertie Gibson in the uh, at the end of the game, where he'll reflect on how things pan out on the field. Though in that first half, it was a tight one. Aundel leading five points to nil here against Teddy's Oxford. It's been a tight one. It's been a tense one, and the second half is coming up very shortly. Aundel ready for the second half. They'll be playing from left to right, leading 5-0 here against Teddy's Oxford. Aundel in their all-white kit as per Teddy's in sky blue. And we have a real game on our hands. It's not been open. It's not been too expansive. But my word, has it been compelling and in this second half. It really could go either way. Aundel leading 5-0. Rory Potter who's in at 10, having been at scrum half last week, will be the man to get us restarted in the second half. And he's had some lovely touches in that first half. Potter hangs it high to the left-hand side as he looks at it. And it's claimed by Teddy's Oxford, who will look to play out. Mason kicks long. He's had to put boot to ball an awful lot today, Mason. The Andal press has been good. But that was carried back in. Call obviously didn't come through. And so it's going to be an Andal line out inside the 22. Oh, a perfect start for them. And they bring it down and get them all moving. And for the first time, they really get it moving, but they break away around the corner. Apologies there. Technical issues again. Slightly upsetting the flow here. We do apologise. Just 
said he's just kind of a man seen for a bit of treatment. Will Allen just in conversation with the referee there, the number eight. Which does suggest it might be Mason that's taken a knock there. No, Mason's on his feet and just having a word with the referee now. And we'll have a scrum down, down the ball. So this tense, tense game of rugby continues. Looks as though Benjamin Dollar has come on for Andal in the second row. I suspect Charles Chute and Charles Cartledge are on as well. Likewise, Caden Hader and Charlie Ferret. Person Edwards Oxford. We'll just keep an eye on that for you. Penalty Aundel. Haskins goes quickly. Throws the dummy to the left-hand side. Now moves it to the right-hand side. Good handling from the Aundel backs. They have had lovely hands all day. And then just as I say that, the pass is a little loose and straight into touch. And we'll come back for the scrum. So many times they've been right on the edge of putting their, mo their wide men away, but just haven't quite been able to get it going. drive that from Teddy's. That's great work from the visitors. Really fantastic work. And Mason just thinks he's spotted a bit of space on the blind side. Gets the ball away brilliantly. And Teddy's going to look to play from inside their own 22. They're playing with advantage. Why not? We know the skill and pace in that back line. The ball won't come. So we'll come back for the penalty. And Mason will be very, very keen to find a good touch. If I was him, our cameraman would be the target. And indeed, our cameraman was the target. A well-placed kick from Charlie Mason. Moves his side up to the halfway line. And they escape unscathed from that early Aundel pressure at the start of the second half. Line out goes over the top, but it's tidied up by Mowat at the tail of the line out. Aundel think they've turned this over. They haven't quite. Relton went for the box kick. It was kind of half charged down, but the ball still ended up in Teddy's hands, but it's really loose ball at the moment. Aundel trying to turn it over. Have they succeeded? Referee says they have. So we're going to come back to the halfway line. I'm not quite sure what the decision will be there. Is he going to say it was knocked on by Aundel? I thought it was a charge down myself, but uh, referee was right in the thick of the action. So he'll know better than I. He does indeed give the knock on. Scrum on the 15. Relton to put in. Relton just could have had a half a thought. About going down the blind side there, but the referee's blown his whistle. Scrum had gone past 45. So we'll have a reset. Oh, 
The crowd, and indeed the players, getting ever more vociferous in this second half. AJ Singh up against Elliot Sarushi here on the near, near side. Relton to Mason. Mason engages Goldsmith into the action. Goldsmith gets across the halfway line, but it's been ripped clear and ripped clear brilliantly by Jack Buick. Buick in open space, fires the pass out wide. Oh, this is great play from Aldor. Pasco now with the big handoff. Pasco charging, still going as Pasco deep into the 22 now. Back inside, now charging through, goes Dexter Lynch. Dexter Lynch is across the line. Oh, that's a wonderful, wonderful score from Aundel. Dexter Lynch, the outside centre, 13 on his back today. He was wearing 10 last week. And Aundel score a glorious try. The turnover from Buick. Who threw that brilliant pass out to his back line. And then it was a good charge forward from Pasco. Dragging defenders with him. And then Potter just fed it inside to Dexter Lynch. Running on his inside shoulder and Lynch tidied it all up. Potter nails the conversion. Aundel with a 12 0 lead. Glorious, glorious stuff. Well, how good was that from Aundel? We said they can play this Aundel back line. That's exactly what Bertie Gibson was talking about at half time, and we saw it there in abundance. Deep kickoff from Mason. Wandle well, looked to be intercepted, but Case found some space and then moved it. To George Ayer and Ayer kicked in field. One of those old-fashioned inside kicks we used to see so often back in the 70s and 80s. Mason puts boot to ball. Might be a spiral bomb, that. Certainly was. No one could read it. Bouncing around. Falls back into Teddy's hands. Brilliant work that from Mason. You do not see a lot of spiral bombs from schoolboys. Difficult skill to execute. Clearly been working hard over the summer as Mason passes that one inside. And they're breaking through. Go Teddy's Oxford. Pass goes wide. Is there some space? Intercepted by Aundel. Crucial, crucial intervention that from Djurovic. Referee's going to bring us all the way back. Just try and work out what for. Not like a tidy enough piece of play. As the rain has started to come in here in Northamptonshire. Referee just having a word with Pasco. I think we're going to be coming back for a penalty. I wonder if there was just a little pullback on one of the Teddy's players as they made that breakthrough. Fairly firm word there from the referee. Well, he did have a chat with Pasco in the first half about the number of penalties conceded by Aundel. In fact, he's saying they were offside. As Mason finds touch, puts his side into the 22.
apologies once again, ladies and gentlemen. We're having some real technical gremlins here today. As Mason kicks long. Sure, those of you at home, well, we do apologise for cutting out. You haven't missed any scores. It remains Arundel 12, St Edward's Oxford 0. That wonderful, wonderful score from Arundel that extended their advantage from 5 to 12. The Potter conversion with the extra 2 from the Dexter Lynch try. It's been a game that's heavy on set piece. First game of the season, really. Certainly anywhere south of uh, of the very northern tip of the country. And it's been played in anything other than perfect conditions. It's been a wonderful first half of term, this. And it's a little chilly out there today. In fact, more than a little chilly. It's about 9 or 10 degrees, which uh, compared to the 25 we've been used to for the entire first six weeks of the season, it's quite a shift as both sides knock the ball on there. It'll be an Aundel scrum. Arthur Case has had a good game at number eight for Aundel. Carried really very nicely and put a huge amount of pressure on in defence. And he might just fancy this blind side. It's a big blind side. They get a right shoulder on, he may go. He does indeed go. Feeds it to his scrum half and then on to George Air. George Air breaks the game line. Come back across as. Buick takes the ball in. And it's a penalty to Teddy's. Neck roll at that ruck. And while Teddy's have been under pressure at times in this game, time and time again, they've come up with an answer defensively. It looks like Buster Relton is just considering his options here. He just wants to have a word with David Danjuma. Quite a long word, in fact. Danjuma keen to have his say as well. Billy Pasco comes in just to ask a question or two. I think that's a front row chat, mate. I wouldn't get too involved. No. Oh. William Chapman's finding some things out as well. I do hope he's got his watch off. That's all I'll say. Better get the tea and biscuits out, I'd say, at this rate. Well, we've got another couple coming in for a chat. Oi. Well, it's, a, it's either a very detailed conversation Roundel are just struggling to understand exactly what it is that the referee is asking of them. Billy Pascoe has decided that this is all too technical for him and he's backed off. And we've ended up with a yellow card. David Janjuma sees yellow. I'm not entirely sure what's gone on there at all. But uh, we, know, we know what's happened, which is that Aundel have the penalty and Aundel have gone and booted it downfield. Stays in field, but they went quickly there, Aundel. And they're playing advantage. There was a knock on. 
from Aldo. So Teddy's make ground. That ball just lost through contact, but I think we might come back for the scrum, will we? Well, I must say, that was a very confusing piece of play there. I, I'm starting to wonder if actually it might have been the referee was a bit confused as to the identity of the person that had put in the neck roll. And that was why we were having such a, uh, such a conference about the decision. And of course what that decision does mean is that Aldel are going to have to make a change because they need someone on in the front row. Looks like Charles Chu is that man. They've had to sub off, I think, Jack Buick. Well, confusion reigns here at Arundel School. They do need to match the numbers in the scrum, of course, which is why you see Rory Potter there coming into the scrum. I bet he's not packed down at number eight too many times in his career. Scrum half last week, starts at fly half this week. And there he is at number eight. But he's certainly got the Scott Quinnell binding pose. Allen picks up and Allen just makes a couple of yards before he's hit by Thomas Williams. And now Teddy's might just find a bit of space. That's an important tackle there from George Ayer. It was on on this left hand side for Teddy's if Ayer hadn't made that tackle as well as he did. AJ Singh with a big tackle as well there. Relton. Just pops that one to Caden Hayder. Mason cuts from right to left and tries to feed it wide, but it doesn't stick. And Aundel survived that tricky little spell there without conceding. kick goes up from Haskins and comes straight back down. Which side has this one ended up on? Teddy's have claimed it. And Teddy's tried to move it wide, but the Aldel press was good, as it has been all game. Every time they've looked under pressure, they've pressed high, but this could be their unlocking here as Teddy's go bursting through, through Walmart. The open side flanker throws the dummy. And Teddy's number seven has his score. Will Mowat finishing things off there for the away side, and they are on the scoreboard. They've deserved that. They've had their moments. And now they have their score. Well, apologies once again for cutting out. You just missed 
Charlie Mason landing that conversion from the touchline to close the gap to 12-7. Just five points in this one. 11 minutes left to play. We're in for a blockbuster finish. Will Mowat's try and Charlie Mason's conversion. Closing this one right down. Andor still with 14, remember. Good claim at the line out from Elijah Thomas Williams there. And Andor get them all moving. Hit, boys! Djordovic, who opened the scoring early in the first half. Loose ball though, rip clear in contact. And Elijah Thomas Williams has it for Aundel. Looking for a quick response to that Moat try. And it's been stolen back by Teddy's. And Teddy's could have some space to exploit here on this near side as they come charging forward. Teddy's still going. Perhaps the pass should have gone. Still the opportunity might be there for them. Goldsmith takes it on. Down the blind side they come again. Fact, there's Goldsmith there. Driven into touch. Fergus Lyle to Elijah Thomas Williams. That's nice connectivity at the line out there. Potter thumps it long. Controlled on the foot by Mason. But controlled on the foot by Goldsmith, I think it was. It's another penalty. But then lost forward as Teddy's looked to go quick. And Aundel will have the scrum. Referee's just popped his time off for a second. Back onto the field is David Danjuma. Yellow card period is over here. So Aundel back up to 15 for the final eight minutes of the game. Looks like Charles Cartilage is on. kick will Teddy's as they chase down this five point deficit they haven't won here at Aundel in the lifetime of anyone out there on the field at the moment though in fairness this fixture hasn't been on the card since 2008 draw in the year 2000 their best result at Aundel this century could they change that in this final few minutes kick comes bouncing through it's just about tidied up in the backfield by Aundel Teddy's a pleading with the referee for the penalty and he gives in to those pleas that was fantastic work from Jack Wood the pacey number 11. But it might have been Charlie Ferret. I think Charlie Ferret has come on for Jack Wood. And it was Charlie Ferret making an impact there. Yeah. 
Mason's going to go for the posts here by the look of things. He's calling for the tee. And it's not a bad call. It's going to move them within three if he lands it. But he's going to need the tee quickly. Remember, the shot clock is on. We saw Aaron Farrell fall foul of this. Bring them against Samoa last weekend. And it's Charlie Mason's hurry to get on with this one. He's just got to compose himself, though, and get that heart rate down before striking it, having called for the penalty. They need to land it. Eight minutes left to play. Mason absolutely nails it. Charlie Mason with the penalty. And we have a two-point game. I'll tell you what. We have a real game on our hands. The crowd are up here at Oundle trying to cheer their team on. First home game of the season. They will not want to let this one slip away. This first meeting between these two sides for 15 years and it is not letting us down. As we move towards this final couple of minutes, Teddy's look to move it wide. There could be some space here for them as they move it as well. They stab it through, but the kick just runs out. And it was out in the full. We'll come back into Teddy's territory for the outdoor line-out. In fact, there's some debate as to whether it was straight out or not. Straight out indeed. That's the call. And that's free. As you can see, will bring us inside Teddy's territory for the outdoor line-out. Ball goes to the middle. Andal flat ball from Haskins to Pasco, who gets across the gain line. Well, it was turned over by Teddy's. The referee just wants a chat as well. Big week here on Next Gen 15. Live games on Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday, it's back to rugby school as they welcome Wellington College. And on Wednesday, Ship Lake College hosts Dalesbury Grammar School. And Michael Hurst receives a yellow card from the referee. And at the weekend, it's off to St. Joseph's College for the St. Joseph's Festival. Two days of live action here on Next Gen 15. It is not to be missed. Millfield looking to become the first side to win three in a row since Colston's in 2003. And a whole host of other sides, 15 other sides to be precise, looking to stop them in that ambition. Here though at Oundle School, Teddy's are down to 14. For the remainder of this game, as Oundle look to take advantage, Pasco, a try here would surely see them victorious. Lynch, who's got one already. Good bit of defence that from Teddy's, but Oundle are going to be happy to be on this part of the field. Case, what a game he's had. It's just spilled. Potter had been screaming in behind his forward pack there, but the ball is lost and Teddy's will have the scrum. But they'll have the scrum right on their own try line.
so just a handful of minutes remaining two points the difference Teddy's need to go the length but all they need is a penalty or a drop goal the ball is slightly loose but it still finds its way into the hands of Aidan Walker on that far side penalty for Roundall sharp work on the floor Elijah Thomas Williams Well, once again, huge apologies for the technical difficulties we've been suffering today. We are right at the death of this game. Two points in it. Aundel leading Teddy's 12-10. Penalty to Aundel. Inside the Teddy's 22. In many ways, this is the game. If Aundel score, that's it. Teddies need a stop and then they need to work their way the length of the field. Theo Haskins stands over the penalty, gives it to Dan Juma. Dan Juma charges forward. He's met by a wall of Teddy's defenders and they drive him backwards. They're not going to go without a fight. The ball goes over the top and into touch. Teddies will have the line out. And one final chance, perhaps. They've got to go 90 metres. But we've seen their attacking quality. They can go 90. Cheers, go up. Scrum resets. Every second that ticks by is a second that Aundel will be grateful to see the back of. Every second that ticks by is torture for Teddies. I'm going to get an interview, sir. Mate, try not to talk into the mic while you... Teddy's ball. Hollander tries to break out. They need to go the length here to Teddy's. They're trying to get the ball wide. It's in the hands of Jack Wood, who's switched wings towards the end of this game. 
Aundel defence is up. Mason stabs it over. That's a bold play, but it may work. How's the bounce? The bounce is pretty good. Lands in Teddy's hands. They go for the kick again. It's running through. In the backfield is Gamble, but it's still loose. Just tidied up now. But Aundel are not where they want to be. They're inside their own 22. There's still time on the clock. Aundel have to play through possession here. Teddies are right on the part of the field they want to be. They just need the ball now. And they're going to have to run this clock out. Ball is spilled loose. Haskins has to dive on it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am so, so sorry. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I am so, so sorry for the technical difficulties we've experienced here today. It has been a real struggle at times. It's been a struggle on the field. It's been a really, really tight battle between the two sides. But Aundel have held out for a famous 12-10 victory. Not since 2008 had these two met. The anticipation was high. And my goodness me, was that anticipation worth it? We got a fantastic game of rugby. 5-0, Aundel led at half time. They extended it to 12-0, but Teddy's through, through Will Mowat and five points from the boot of Charlie Mason made it a real game as we entered the final 10 minutes. Both sides saw yellow. The tension was high, the drama was high. Our technical difficulties didn't help with that. I do apologize for them. But these two sides found a way to put on the most enthralling of games. And they applaud each other off the field. Aundel are back to winning ways. They'd lost a couple on the bounce. But Teddy's just a second defeat of the season. But for Aundel, in this opening home fixture, they have the victory.
Ronaldo make their way to congratulate one another. It has been the most tense of afternoons here in Northamptonshire. It's been absolutely wonderful stuff. And in a couple of moments' time, we're going to hear from Bertie Gibson, the Aundel winger who's sadly out with a hamstring injury as we reflect on what has been a magnificent game. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I've got it. And so Bertie Gibson is here to join us. Bertie, it got tense towards the end, but that is a famous victory for Aundel. The boys dug deep and held on. Yeah, I thought with the changing conditions, I thought that we did well to adapt to the um, to the rain, to the rain. But I think a little bit sloppy at the end, which we can definitely improve on going to next cup game on Thursday. But I think overall it's been a great game. And at half time it was five five nil, but it became twelve nil with that exceptional try. It was Dexter Lynch, I think, that finished it off after the turnover from Jack Buick. That was a glorious piece of play from start to finish, wasn't it? Yeah, just from the uh, Jack Buick turnover, you've done a lot um, in the lower levels. But to do it in the um, first team level, I think it's great. And to see Dexter back um, with his dancing feet, I think it was great. It was, a, it was an overall great, uh, great try and um, definitely boosted our confidence. And of course, if you win on Thursday against Kings Grantham, we get to do this all over again. You'll be hosting, uh, you'll be hosting Teddy's in uh, in round four of the uh, Continental Tire Schools Vars. So uh, that could be an exciting one. Just got to get the job done on Thursday first. Yeah, I think we just have to get um, stay focused on Thursday's game, and then maybe we can see a little rematch of this game and see how that turns out next time. But, all, but first of all, we must um, win on Thursday. And that's an important game for us. Well, you got that media training well sorted there, Bertie. Very, very politically correct answer. Well played, you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Well, cheers for joining us, Bertie. And uh, cheers for joining us, everyone at home today. It's been an absolutely epic occasion and it's all finished up. Aundel 12, St Edward's Oxford 10.